Hello everyone and welcome to um, the National Extension College Lifelong Learning Week Showcase. Um, we'll just wait one minute or perhaps a bit less than a minute just to make sure there's um, enough time for those who are still joining us. But welcome, please say hi in the chat if you can type hello. Um, if you want to share any more about yourself, where you're coming from, please do. Um, and we'll just um, start to welcome those who are joining us. So just bear with us for another 30 seconds. So welcome to those of you who are joining us. We're just waiting a few more seconds as a few more are joining and then we'll start our presentation. Please do say hi in the chat box. It's always nice to hear from people um, and just say a little bit about yourself if you want. If you're a college student already, if you're an adult learner, anything to say hello would be lovely to hear from you. Ah, hello, thank you. I'm going to call you Cherry because that's the name that's on your hello. Hi, thank you for saying hello. It makes it a bit nicer when you're doing these um, online presentations if you think there's somebody there watching you. So I'm going to start now. Thank you for saying hello to those two who did. Um, we are recording this live, so we'll have people popping in and out, um, but also it's available to watch afterwards. And please do so keep saying hello and using the chat. So I'm Esther Chesterman. I'm the CEO of the National Extension College. I'm really pleased to be joined today by Jo Bell, who's our National Extension College Sales and Marketing Manager. Hi, Jo. Hi, Esther. Hi, everybody. Good to Hi. be here. So we're great. Thank you, Joe. So we're going to be doing a joint presentation as part of Lifelong Learning Week. Um, this is a great week. It's an opportunity for students of all ages to think about their career, think about learning, think about lifelong and life wide learning, whether you're looking for learning to be something towards an, another career or a change in direction, or you're just looking at developing your skills and knowledge in any area. So throughout, um, you can ask questions, you can type them in the um, chat box, as some of you have said hello. So please, if you have any questions, please type them. Um, we will either get to them at the moment in the presentation if they're really relevant, or we'll have a Q&A session at the end, and we'll run through and make sure we try and hit some of those questions between us. If we don't know the answers, we'll try to get back to you on them. Um, and if um, you have something that um, is more personal to your particular situation, we have an email at the end, an email address that you can message us and ask us some specific questions. Um, there'll be some opportunities for polls throughout just to gather a little bit of information and be a little bit more interactive. So please do engage in that if you can. Um, and if you have anything specific to ask at the end, please just um, ask the question. So without further ado, I'll start. So I'll just move the PowerPoint on. So hopefully this is the session you've joined, which is National Extension College. Um, you'll learn a little bit about distance learning, what it's like studying distance learning. Um, you'll have the opportunity to look at a course online. So Joe's going to take you through one of our A-level courses and give you a little bit of an experience of what that looks like. And as I said, there'll be opportunities for you to ask questions um, and any advice you might have around online learning or lifelong, life-wide learning in general. So who are we? Well, if you don't know us already, the National Extension College has been in operation for over 50 years. So we're pretty good at what we do. Um, we've been a pioneer of online and distance learning since that time. Um, and really, our remit is to offer education to those who may not have been able to access education previously or are looking at a flexible way of developing their skills and knowledge. Um, so we believe we really are education experts due to the providence of how long we've been um, delivering education, but also for the skills and knowledge we've developed over the years. 
you may have studied in a college, a sort of brick and mortar college, um, or you may have already studied online and you'll have probably had mixed um, online experience. Um, so if you have had any experience in online learning, it'd be lovely to hear from you about that now. So if you want to just type in the box whether you've studied online or distance learning course before um, and what that was like. Was it a good experience? Was it an experience you'd like to um, do again? Or were there elements of it that didn't quite work for you? So please do type a little bit in there as I talk through this slide. So what are the benefits of self-study distance learning? Well, the hope is that you can fit your learning around your current life and your current commitments. Many of our learners are either parents or they um, are working or they have other commitments in their life that means they can't actually access education in a college. So they're looking for a flexible way to have their education. And this is one of the ways that they can explore that with a self-study distance learning course. So one of the elements of self-study is you can choose the time you want to study. So if one o'clock in the morning is the best time for you, then you can pick up your laptop and look at your study and then you can um, use the time when it's best suited for you. So that's really useful. 86% of you have studied online previously. That's wonderful to hear. So you're a little bit expert in this as, as well. So thank you for engaging in that poll. Um, one of the elements really is around our design. So one of our um, areas that we really feel we are expert in is our learning design. I'm just going to take you through in the next um, few slides, a little bit around how our courses are designed. And thank you, Pamela, for sharing that. So Pamela, you said it's the only way I can study as you have autism. So that's really, really lovely of you to share, share that. I'm glad that this is something that really works for you. So thank you. So our course design, we um, really pride ourselves in that we design our courses ourselves and we utilise a large group of experts. And these are experienced teachers, often examiners, so they know what the assessment requirements of the qualification are. They often are assessment experts, so we make sure that that assessment area is really covered off throughout the whole course. And we use subject experts. These are people who know their material very well, they know their subject very well. And also from an online pedagogical perspective, they know how instructional design works to ensure that the um, education that you're receiving and the, the course that you're on really meets the requirements of the specification. So our courses themselves, so we're arranged in sections and topics, and you'll see that when Joe takes you through the course. It's junked, it's a funny word, but we put the learning in little sections, um, which is more motivational, gives you time to reflect on the learning that you've taken part in and make sure that you understand before you move on to the next section. And to help with that, we have activities that have self-checks and that have feedback um, so that you can see whether you have actually moved forward in your learning. A big part of our um, course is that we have tutors, so it's tutor supported. Um, and one of the elements where it's um, obviously really important is to have tutor marked assessments. So you'll be able to upload your assessments and a subject expert will move, will give you feedback um, and make sure that you can embed that feedback in your next assignment. We have clear learning objectives, so we make sure that it's very clear to you what you're learning and how you can move through the course to learn that. And then a big part particularly of um, our certificated qualifications is study and exam hints. So there's opportunities for you to look at how the best way to revise is or how the best way is to approach the final summative assessment for you. Thank you for those who are typing um, in the box. It's really good to hear from you, really good to share your experience of online learning. So thank you for that. If you have any questions as I'm delivering, as myself or Joe talking, do type them in and then we'll be able to come back to them at the Q&A session. So this is just a little example of some of the screenshots from our courses. So you can see that an example of a self-check. Um, we also have additional material that meets the specifications that you have access to on our course. So often our courses have ebooks, 
um, which are really um, specification um, friendly. They meet the qualification requirements and they will guide you alongside your course to work through the material um, to make sure you have a really broad, um, rich understanding of the subject requirements as you work through. You'll also see there an example of a glossary. So a lot of our courses have glossaries, not just a language course, but it's just another aspect of the online distance learning um, design. So you'll be able to go back and look at particular words that are relevant to your studies. So, as I said, we are um, really help you towards your final examination. So we do have an exams team um, and we are um, accredited and certified with most of the um, core UK exam boards. This means we can help you with your non examined assessment if there is that requirement within your course. But also we can actually move you towards an exam venue and make sure you're as well prepared as possible for the final assessment. So within the course guide, and that's the course guide that you will find for each of the courses, you'll have assessment guidance. As I said, you'll have exam hints and tips in all the topics throughout, and then preparation and guidance towards the final exam examination. You'll have opportunities to have a marked past paper, which will be useful in you understanding what it is that you have learnt and the areas and gaps that you may need to study. Part of that, there'll be exemplar answers, giving you an idea of what good looks like so that you can try and craft your own responses to meet that same level. And the assignments that we have throughout the course um, that you upload to your tutor really move you through the um, material and move you through the knowledge and skills that you'll need to sit the final assessment. The learning experience, it can be as much as you want it to be. We have many tools online which will allow you to communicate with other students who are studying the qualification. You don't have to, but the opportunity is there for you. If you wanted to place certain questions, either specific questions to the subject or just to say hello and feel part of a group, that opportunity is there. But the tutors are also in those forums. So though other students may um, give you some comments on particular questions you have, um, it's really quite good also to have response from your tutor. And that's quite useful to see that 33% have studied GCSEs online and 66% something other, so a degree or A level, so well done. That's really useful information for us. And obviously at NEC, we have GCSEs, A levels and professional skills qualifications as well. So some of our case studies, um, so we've put on uh, three case studies here of our previous students um, to look at what it is they've actually gained from studying online. So Leslie, who is the first one, Leslie retired and moved to Italy, which was lovely for Leslie. Um, but Leslie looked at wanting to carry on um, studying. So she took part in our A-level history of art, which is one of the um, qualifications that Joe will be um, showcasing to you. And Leslie says, since reviewing options to study art history as an A-level, I found communication with NEC extremely efficient, which is great. Um, so living in Italy, Leslie had questions about the practicalities of studying with, with NEC but spoke with our student recruitment team. She was reassured that it was possible. Um, Les Leslie was actually changing career. She was a chartered engineer, but wanted to change with career, return to education in 2021, and received lots of feedback and support from her tutor as she moved through. Hopefully these case studies will really help you see how other people's experiences have been. And you can find all our case studies on our website. Edda? or Ida, apologies if Ida or Edda is listening, I'm not sure which uh, way to pronounce her name. So I think a lot of people might relate to this experience. Ada um, in year eight was told by her French teacher that French wasn't her, that really languages wasn't something that she should explore. But as an adult, Ada wanted to go back to that and studied A-level French with us, which has now allowed her to pursue a different career. So sometimes your school education may not have given you the opportunities to move forward. And obviously it's something that you can then use from an online distance perspective as an adult. 
Rhiannon. Um, Rhiannon studied with a Chartered Management Institute qualification, and this really supported Rhiannon in her career at the NHS. She works as a business manager with the NHS, and she's Senior Director of Nursing. I was due to retire, but wanted to um, look at a different way of operating in the NHS, but with a leadership role. So Rhiannon utilised the CMI Level 5 in management to progress her career with us. Hopefully some of these stories might, might resonate with you or you may see yourself a little bit as to where you are in your career. So if you are looking at a career change, it'd be really lovely to hear from you around that and see whether that's the reason that you're looking to explore an online course. I'll just run through a few more just to give you a bit of a feel. So we have Gemma. So Gemma also was looking for a career change and studying um, A-levels. Um, so Gemma was working full time as a dental nurse, but she had an aspiration to become a dental hygienist. Um, but in order to do this, Gemma needed A-level biology. Um, so while she was carrying out her studies, um, she was also working and able to fund her, her um, studies as well. So that was um, a good opportunity for Gemma. Well done to Gemma for doing that. Um, then we have Amy. So I think for a lot of people studying um, is something you have to fit in between your normal life. So Amy was working shifts in the care sector, wanted to apply for a degree in medicine. Um, having left school, didn't have quite the right qualifications and enrolled with NEC so that she could study GCSEs, English, Maths, Biology and Chemistry and then move through to her career change. Um, so well done to Amy. Um, and Amy has achieved those qualifications now, moved on to the next section of her progression. And last one, another A-level art history, um, which is really relevant because that's the qualification you're going to be looking at with Jo. Um, Sarah always liked studying and always liked looking at that life-wide learning, wanting to Im improve her knowledge for, for the joy of improving knowledge, but also looking at whether there is a way of um, you know, looking at your interest and moving it forward into a qualification and then a career. So Sarah went on to use her history qualification, her career, but wanted an art A-level, um, art history A-level as well, and now works for an editor in a website that includes writing, editing and commissioning articles. So just a few little um, areas there that it might be interesting for you. Hopefully one of them might have resonated with you around your particular journey. Um, and it'd be lovely to hear from you. There's a journey that you're on from a lifelong learning perspective. So I'm going to hand over to Joe now. Please, if you've got any questions, do type them or note them down for our Q&A section. But now Joe's going to take you through um, looking at a live course. This is our A-level history of art, which you've heard a little bit about there. Um, so I'm going to hand over, just give us a second while we switch over screens. So I'm not sure whether I need to stop sharing. I think there you go. It's the magic of technology. So I'll mute myself and hand over to you now, Joe. Okay, thanks, Esther. Um, hello, everybody. Um, I think that was a, a really very good and comprehensive sort of overview of you know how we work as an organisation, our courses, and um, some very good examples of the types of students that we support every day. So, thank you for that, Esther. Um, without further ado, I, I will I will take you through uh, one of our. Uh, well, a course that we're very proud of. It's one of a, you know, a fully interactive course that has been specifically designed for online learning. Um, it has been co-created in partnership with the Association for Art History. Um, so without further ado, I'll take you through just sort of our platform and how the course works. Uh, when you open the course in Learn at NEC, you will see the course companion uh, a list of forums, plans, and guides, uh, and support that are designed to help you with your studies. Um, as you can see in this getting started section, I believe there is a video which um, should set out and, and sort of help you navigate uh, our learning platform and the course. Uh, we ask people to go through this section because it really sort of helps them later on if they sort of have an understanding of how the platform works. Uh, and obviously it means that you can get the best, uh, best out of it. Uh, moving on then to the course, 
I thought we would take a look at topic one, uh, section eight. So if we click on section, and on this landing page, you then click in to the Evolve platform where the course is. So as you can see, uh, each course has an introduction and also learning objectives. Um, so this sort of gives a good overview of all the information you need to sort of prepare. Um, and ultimately, the course will provide you with all the information you need to prepare for the A-level History of Art exam. Um, this includes lots of engaging images and prompts to sort of make you slow down and take in important points. Um, we're really pleased with this course because it has plenty of really sort of interactive activities, one which you can see now, which is activity 8.1. Um, I thought perhaps we could do this together. Um, so either type into uh, the box um, or just sort of do it in your, in your head and uh, we'll try and get, you know, do as best as we can. I'm no art historian, so do excuse me. Um, so activity 8.1, uh, as you can see, the question is, we said that color can perform many functions. Let's take the primary color blue as an example. In the series of paintings below, each uses blue for a different reason. And in this drop and drag activity, you should be able to, aha, uh there -huh, we go, be able to move your answer into the correct section. So if we look at painting one, could we perhaps have an idea of what we think the artist is doing when he's trying to uh, show color? So the options are symbolic to symbolize heaven, shadow, psychological, scientific, compositional linking, spatial illusion, spiritual descriptive. Thank you for your answers. If we just sort of start putting in and seeing what happens. So we'll just do a couple of these, I think. So that's the first and the second, perhaps. I can see some of your answers coming through. So psychological to show her mood. That's perhaps the first one. Yes. I mean, I imagine there's a couple of, you know, there's a few that probably fit all in, in, in one. Once you submit your answers, which we'll just do quickly now, we'll just shove whatever into whatever box and just sort of see where we are, maybe potluck. There we go. Just two more. We submit our answers. And we can see that it's telling us that we didn't get all of their right. Well, I think we expected that. But it means that we can have another go. And once it does, uh, it, once you do sort of get them in order, it will obviously show you that you got them right. You can do that as many times as you want. Um, and obviously, underneath there is a video which will, which are throughout the throughout the uh, the course. The videos uh, are, are available, so you can sort of learn more about the topics from subject experts. And these are filtered throughout the course, as well as the short quizzes and drag, drag and drop activities to sort of help you set your own understanding of the material. So, moving on i think if we look down here to the going further section these sections going further will give you extra information as well and often they're links uh, out to perhaps videos or resources that are sort of relevant to the topic and uh, just sort of extra information to give you that 
sort of um, maybe that little bit more that you sort of need out of the course. Um, we also have study hints and tips which are filtered out through the course as well to sort of just uh, push you in the right direction. Uh, if we can go on to activity two, which is essentially how, again, how does the painter use color? I think if maybe we could spend a little bit longer on, on this one and we'll run through each painting and see what you guys perhaps think. Obviously put it in the box and uh, we'll try our best together. So with the previous activity in mind, let's return to our three images of dancers. So the first painting, A Dance to the Music of Time. And then the dance class and that's one, it's Matisse. So this is really, once you sort of, you know, looked at the videos, read some of the information, it's asking you to sort of put into the box a, more, a, far, a far more sort of descriptive answer, which you can save and uh, go back to. So if we sort of just type into the box, and then you can check your answers against what uh, is in the course. So these are really sort of designed there for you to sort of, you know, sort of be able to uh, push your ideas out there and sort of feel perhaps not feel sort of, uh, you know, that you're on your own. Uh, you can save your answers. You can sort of go back uh, to them. Um, and I think the interactive uh, element of this course is, is really is, is great in, in regards to how you can sort of submit your answers and make your points and sort of go back to it and, uh, and um, continuously um, improve on what you've been learning. So I wonder how many people sort of got that. Okay, yes. So moving through the course, again, as I mentioned, there's videos and uh, which should give you an extra sort of perspective on the course. There's also image gal galleries throughout the course, which should give you an opportunity to compare images around a theme um, it's, it's quite easily to easy to navigate as you can see uh, you simply use the arrows to navigate and you can sort of check your answers and obviously reset for another try to re reveal any solutions in any of these interactive quizzes or topics as they occur so i, I was going to ask a sort of quick question here as well uh i wondered how you guys sort of you know everyone has a different way of learning and i didn't know if you had any thoughts of in terms of this is obviously a very sort of visual course but it also uses plenty of different formats sort of video audio uh you know uh, text as well as a visual uh, element um so it sort of covers all bases but i didn't know if you guys had uh, any particular ways of learning that you preferred and if you wanted to put that in the box for me you can just say you prefer to sort of learn through visual uh, or audio ah and there's the question there for the uh, poll so i'll give you guys just a few seconds just to sort of answer that Excellent. Okay. So really this should give you a, a very good sort of general idea of the course uh, and sort of how to navigate it and obviously the ways of, of learning. Um, at the end of each topic, there is a summary 
which provides a checklist of what you have learned so you can see your progress throughout your studies. Um, if you're not unsure of an item, you can always revisit the topic and go back to it. Uh, and this is and this is why I think this is a, you know a particularly good example of one of our courses because you can continuously go back and uh, double check if you're unsure of anything. And I can see that some of you have already answered uh, reading and visually. I learn by reading out loud, which I think is a really excellent way of of uh, of learning. Uh, and I feel the same when I'm sort of watching videos. I feel like the the, the videos would be very useful for me um, because it, it just gives that sort of uh, a collection of of all of the senses, if you know what I mean. Uh, so yes, great. What well, I think, hopefully, that would give you a, a good idea of of one of our sort of more interactive courses. Um, at the end of each section, I just obviously want to make you aware as well that you, you the silent assignments are made available. And this is where you can uh, enter your assignment and then you'll receive uh, specific uh, feedback from your course tutor, who is also there to guide you through the course as well. So uh, as well as being able to return to topics and sections, you will also have uh, the, the tutor who will be uh, giving you assignment feedback uh, and hopefully can point you in the right direction uh, and help you make any improvements uh, to your work. So I think I'm going to hand back to Esther now. If you have any questions specific to the course, please do put them into the box and I'll try my best uh, to answer them. Um, as 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 best as I can. I think we're looking through. Yeah. But yeah, if there's anything on the course you'd like to, yes, talk about, then just please enter into the comments and I, I will do my best to answer you as soon as I can. But I'll hand back to Esther now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joe. I always love looking through the history of art A level because it is such a visual qualification. Um, but just to say our, our courses, um, depending on the subject, um, have different forms and modes of delivery. Um, and some of them have ebooks that you move out to, as I said, um, our maths ones have specific um, material as well that will support students. On the A-level history of art, we have a sketchbook that is online. So we have quite a lot of different things that you can use to help with your study. So we're at the point for questions and answers now. So can you talk about different ways we can study A-levels with you? I think there's a fast track and a kind of in your own time track. Oh, I like the in your own time track. We can mark it, use that, mark it that one. So yes, any NEC, um, we do have um, fast track, structured fast track. Um, so I'll just explain the difference between the two. As a student, you can enroll with us at any time of the year and self-study an A-level. Um, the point where you need to make a decision is when you want to enter for the exams and the exam board set the exam dates. Um, we have an exams team, an exams and assessment team. So we'll support you and guide you around which would be the most effective um, way of you entering those exams, depending on how much you have moved through the course. Some and that could take you one, two, three years. So, you know, you can work your way through your A-level dependent or your GCSE, or whatever course it is, dependent on the time you have. Some students are looking to um, achieve an A-level quite quickly and in a way that's very motivating um, from them personally and in a cohort, in a class, more classroom environment. So we, we do have a range of structured fast track A-levels. Um, and in these you have, as it says, structured. So you have certain things to complete at certain times. So for some students, that's what they like. They like to be able to have more deadlines and certain activity that's live that they can take part in because they feel that moves them through the course in a more effective way. Um, our structured fast track students start in the September and look to sit their exam in the following um, spring. Um, there's live tutor sessions, um, there's live guidance, more assignments and more group work. 
However, if you're on the, the um, standard A-level option, you can, you know, as additional, have a one-to-one -one with a tutor, and that's an additional service, or you could have past papers marked as an additional service, or set your own timetable. Part of our student support guidance is to um, provide you with um, a, a template that you can start to plan your own study timetable. So if you can't join the structured fast track or if it's not for you, then you could use a, a model that you, you could work through on your own. But that's a good question. So thank you. Hopefully that's answered your question. Are A-level examinations conducted once in a year? Um, hi, Killam. Generally, yes. Generally, most exam boards, and we work with all the main UK exam boards, that's Pearson Ed Excel, AQA, OCR and Cambridge. Most of them have a spring or summer um, sitting, which is generally between May and June. Over the last couple of years, there has been a um, autumn exam session and that's to allow students who have had a centre assessed or teacher assessed grade to enable them to sit in examination if they wanted to either improve on their grade or to um, to change what the grade was. Um, so normally there is only one sitting in the year. Very good questions coming through. If I do an AS level, if I go on to A level, would I already have done half of it by doing the AS level or do I have to do the whole A level? Um, AS, um, so for those of you who perhaps um, either older like me um, or um, are younger, so the, the sort of modern way of looking at A levels are now mainly linear. So the government has put forward that A levels now are generally a two year course and you sit a final examination at the end. We're working with exam boards with some of our A-levels where you can do an AS as well. And that means that you can gain a certificate for your AS level, um, but then you can then move it, move back to do the final A-level. So you won't have to start again. But that's subject specific and course specific. So if there's a particular AS level, an A-level that you're interested in, please do contact our course advice team and they'll be able to help you decide which one is best for you. How, how do you support revision for exams? Exam, example, do you provide past papers? So we do have, um, as part of your course, for a standard course, you have um, one past paper marking um, at a point that's really relevant to your studies. And that will give you a really good idea of how, um, whether there are any gaps for you. We also have additional past papers um, which are available. However, all our assignments, um, there's, there's over about 10 assignments throughout the course, that are pegged or linked to past papers and examination questions. So, as I said, um, our courses are developed by our subject experts with the end assessment in mind. So all the assignments you do that are marked and a part of the course will move you towards understanding your gaps, giving you feedback around the areas that you need to progress and will give you a good idea as to what areas and what, what preparation you may need to do as part of your final exam. And we have revision tips and revision guidance throughout the course. Some of it's embedded within the course and some of it's additional that the tutors post throughout the course in the tutor forums, just to give you some more um, ideas around revision. We have a revision guide, which gives you some tips. And re recently we did a revision webinar, which is available on our YouTube channel to give you some ideas um, if you haven't had them already around ways and approaches to different types of revision skills. Mentioned about the additional services, such as marking papers, do I have to pay for each extra service? It depends on the services that you're looking for. We have quite a, a, a full service that we offer. Um, not many students feel the need to go outside the core service. Um, it depends on your learning needs. You may have additional learning needs that you feel you want to have additional support with. Um, but the majority of our students take our core offer and find that is perfectly plenty for them to be able to prepare and sit the examination. The additional services services are there for those who feel they haven't got the requirement within the core service. That may be due to your own learning style or your own context, but the majority of our students don't need to take part in any additional service. They can progress to the final assessment and attain well without the additional services.
I'm taking all these questions, Joe. Please, if you know if the answers to any, jump in. But I'm happy to keep going. Kellum, you're asking some good ones here. We do have a UCAS service um, and we do um, have um, a number of support um, elements for students looking to um, progress. So UCAS, we, we are UCAS Centre and actually we're signposts from the UCAS website, if you know it, as an example, Online Distance Learning College. We can provide references, we can provide predicted grades, and we can provide support for your um, personal statement writing. So we do have that. If you're an Oxbridge prospective student, well done, that's fantastic. We have an additional course. This is something that you might want to consider. Um, we worked with some subject experts around um, Oxbridge um, preparation, if I can get the word out, and we have critical thinking and problem solving self-study courses that are, are priced very, very um, competitively. Um, critical thinking and problem solving are two of the main skills that Oxbridge look for, um, but also they're skills that really will help anyone looking to progress to a university or into a high level of employment. So I would advise you to have a look at these 20 hour self-study courses and we really, really take you through some key activity which will help you prepare for the next level of your education or for the next level of your employment. Um, depends on the GCSE, Helen. Thank you for that question. So we do some IGCSEs with Cambridge and we do some standard GCSEs. So it depends on the board and it depends on whether it's an exam board that has two sittings or one. So again, if there's a specific GCSE or IGCSE that you're interested in, please either look at our website or contact our exams team and they'll be able to tell you what sittings there are each year because it does vary depending on the GCSE um, course. You guys are asking some really good questions, so thank you. Hopefully some of the answers are really helpful to other people on the call as well. Is there any specific questions about uh, courses at all? While people are thinking about that, Joe, I'll just say because of Lifelong Learning Week, um, we've put together a really um, attractive offer, we hope. So it's a 20% off offer. It's only for this week for Lifelong Learning Week. So if you are looking to um, develop your learning and looking to progress with a course, um, please get in contact with us and you'll be able to take part in the 20% offer. And that's across all our courses. There's some T's and C's. I'm not going to do that general thing that you do where you run through the T's and C's very quickly, um, but I'll signpost you to the T's and C's on our website. So just have a read of those. Um, and they're the terms and conditions that go along with the offer. But we really want to be able to offer this as part of Lifelong Learning Week. So the week is here as an opportunity for you to really think about your learning, think about your career, think about your employment. Um, so we really like to, to sort of help you with that by giving you an offer of 20% off. Just, okay, I'm interested in combined science. Well, I need to buy equipment for experiments. So we work with, um, we have our own exam venues, but we work with a number of um, science, practical science organizations um, that would um, be able to help you with your practical science um, practice. Um, and they're dotted around the country where you can go and take part. There is additional fees for that. Um, we do put forward um, small experiments. Generally, the experiments that we say in our courses are things that you might have within your um, house um, because you, surprisingly, I'm not a scientist, but surprisingly, there's quite a lot of things you have in your science house that relate to science experiments, things that you probably wouldn't be aware of. Um, so we do try to make the courses quite self-contained, um, but for students who are looking to gain more practical lab skills, we do work with partner um, science laboratories who can be able to help you um, refine your um, practical lab skills to enable you to take part in the endorsed um, science practicals perspective of the assessment. Can all the science course be done without a practical exam? I can't do practical exams. I'd need to double check on that, Pamela, but I do know that most of the courses 
um, don't require um, the endorsed practical aspect. Um, I wouldn't want to say now all of them because I just want to just really double check that. But for my understanding, and I don't know whether, Joe, you know, I think the majority don't need the practical e endorsement. The, yes, them. I think the, the majority have an option on mm -hmm. on the on the NEA element. Um, so, you know, it, it, it would it's they, they tend to be marked separate from the overall A level. So they're an additional mark as, as, as the same with Esther. I'd have to double check and the, the information is available on our website on our at Sam's and assessment page for the specific courses that do require a practical endorsement, but also on the course page should you give you extra information and it will say whether um, it, you it's required for you to do the, the practical element. Hope that helps, Pamela. But please do get in contact with us with the specific qualification you're looking to explore. Yes, they do, yes. Walid. That's a very, very easy answer. We work, as I said, with UCAS, which is the university's um, course admission service. Um, so we're very well known with universities. We've just been collecting um, information from all the universities our students have progressed to. And we've got a, lo a lovely amount of universities our students have progressed to last year. We're really pleased with the courses, qualifications that they've moved on to. We work. We are credited with all the known um, UK awarding bodies. So your A level is exactly the same as somebody sitting an A level in a brick school. Um, so and is accepted in exactly the same way. Your certificate wouldn't say distance learning on it. It's exactly the same certificate that anybody who was studying in a different way would gain. Yes, I would like to just add to that as well. Available on our website, uh, you know, further to the case studies that uh, Esther highlighted earlier, there's plenty of case studies um, available on the website of our students who have gone to well-known universities, uh, whether that be Oxbridge or other sort of Russell Group uh, universities. So that that information is there as well, if you if you want to sort of look in further detail. So you can read about real students and they have gone to Manchester, they have gone, gone to LSE and they have gone mm -hmm. to Oxford and Cambridge. So you can see mm -hmm. exactly, you know, following in those footsteps, Waleed. Just while the next question's coming in, I've just, um, so I moved on from the 20% um, off slide, but I'll just show that again. Um, because we were talking when that was on. Um, we've got a lot of information on our website, so please do visit it. Um, one of the things I thought might be quite relevant um, for um, Life, Lifelong Learning Week is our career tracks. Um, this is just a small number of them. We've got a few more as well. Um, and these are particularly interesting if you're looking for a specific career or a change of career. Um, they're they're qu quite good documents. You know, they really have a lot of information in there which will help you understand the career that you're moving into and the qualifications um, that you would require. So if you're looking for that progression pathway, um, please do have a look at the information we have on our website. And as Joe said, we've got, and I've already run through, we've got lots and lots of different case studies and it's really good for you to hear and see students who've progressed from National Extension College. We're really proud of our students and what they achieve. So we like to shout about it. So we've got lots of information on our website, which will help you um, and hopefully be able to see yourself there and think about, you know, what it is um, that they've got that's similar to your particular context or situation. These are some of the other guides that we've got. We've got a guide for home educators, um, retake guide. If you're looking to retake your A-levels, we've got revision guides, lots of information. And that's available on our website so for you to download. Um, and then obviously, if you enroll with us and you move on to our um, Learn at NEC platform that Joe was demonstrating, lots more information and guidance that's specific to the course that you are on. So I don't know if there's any other questions that we want to highlight or anybody got any last questions they'd like to pose to us. The recording will be um, available on YouTube as soon as we finish. So if you have got some, like, other people you feel may be interested in this or you'd like to go back and have a listen again, then please you can look at our YouTube channel and have a, have a listen again or have a look at certain aspects of it. We will be um, following up with an email if you booked on Eventbrite. So if you booked on Eventbrite, we will be sending you the recording and some information, some further information so that you can um, have a read of that in your own time. 
Um, if you haven't um, booked on Eventbrite and you'd like some information, please do get in contact with us at info at um, where you can see the email address if you just want to note that down. Um, and it's just coming up on the screen here. So you can contact us at info at or give us a call. Always nice to talk on the phone and we'll be able to pass on some further information to you. I'll do my teacher wait time to see if there's any more questions. But I think it's about time we're wrapping up now. I've really enjoyed getting to know some of you. So thank you very much for sharing either your context or your questions with us. Um, it's lovely to have that because sometimes you can feel a bit lonely when you're delivering online, can't you, Joe? It's nice to hear from people. Yes. I think so. And I think that's why it's so important as well, you know, on our learning platform, um, as well as some of the courses and the interactive element, there is uh, also student forums. So you can sort of be part of that community and speak to your fellow, you know, uh, students on the course if you if you choose to. Um, and also, as, as it's been highlighted as well, you know, if, if you have a look at some of the case studies on our website, then you can really sort of see that there's it's, it's really it, it, lots of people come for very different reasons to NEC. Uh, and we provide courses to, you know, a wide range of, of people. Um, and so it's, it's, it's really great to sort of hear and, and, and read their stories. So I would recommend that. And if you have any particular uh, questions, then our student recruitment team are very experienced and will sort of guide you through and will really help you make a decision that's best for you if you give them a call or uh, email them. Wonderful, thank you. Very, very good summary there, Joe. So I think we'll say goodbye now. Thank you so much for your time. Hopefully you've learned something. So you may not have known what it was like to study online um, before this presentation. So I hope that by now that you've got a good feel for the National Extension College and how our courses operate online. So thank you very much. And please do, as I say, get in contact or re-watch the video if there's anything that you missed. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.